Welcome back to our series on backgrounds. Today we are going to be doing a page from uh, Lulu Mail's The Million Sea Creatures. We are going to be preparing this page for using uh, watercolor on it or water-based medium. So I am going to be using Daniel Smith's Transparent Watercolor Ground. So I'm just going to shake it up. I am going to apply it with a foam applicator and we'll get started. I generally will use either a Daniel Smith watercolor ground or a clear gesso as my uh, protectant for the page. If you happen to apply your um, amount too thickly, you can also take a nail brush, kind of a um, nail file, and uh, lightly sand the page down if you get too many ridges. But as long as you're doing a thin coat, I go in first one direction and then the other, then you should be fine. I'll speed the camera up and you can watch how this goes. You do need to let this dry overnight. So it doesn't change it into watercolor paper, but it does allow you to use watercolor mediums on your paper. So it's not full license to uh, do absolutely everything, but it will do quite well. I'm going to let this dry and we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, it'll just be a minute for you and continue on using watercolors in this book. So it's the next day and we are going to continue on in A Million, million Sea Creatures by Lulu Mayo. I have a uh, cardboard blotter behind this page. I have covered the page in the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. I can feel uh, some ridges so I'm going to take a very fine uh, nail brush and I'm just going to lightly basically sand down the ridges. And then I'm going to take a chamois uh, cloth and just wipe the page to get rid of any dust. And now when I feel the paper, it's very smooth. Um, there may be a few ridges along the very edge, so just let me get that. Bit. Okay, so our page is prepared and we are ready to and a water-based medium. My other supplies that I have today are a clean and dirty water cup. I'm going to be using my 40 set of Neo Color 2 and instead of a uh, water brush I'm going to use an actual uh, watercolor paint brush and uh, I also have a palette here. Okay I just have a variety of brushes. I have uh, two different eights but they are obviously uh, quite different and then I have a kind of a cat's tongue number 10. So I just will grab whatever brushes I kind of feel that I need. I'm not a professional watercolor person. I am just somebody who enjoys adding watercolor mediums to my paper. So I'm going to kind of plan out uh, the page and I know that I want some uh, brown on the bottom so I'm going to go and grab ochre and I'm also going to grab probably some uh, olive color because I think there needs to be a bit of uh, green in this area as well. Now for Neo Color 2's you can apply them a few different ways. Uh, we can obviously uh, color directly onto the paper and then activate it there. However, that usually requires a bit more scrubbing and um, this is thin paper and even though it's been treated, I do want to uh, tread carefully with it. So I will probably activate the pigment on either the palette or directly off of the crayon with the brush. So that is what I'm going to do. This is a large area down here, so I'm going to grab my larger brush. I'm just going to wet it 
and then I'm going to rub some of this onto the plate. I'm going to activate it and it activates really well quite quickly and then I'm going to just come and basically paint on the paper. Now that's very light. Let's zoom you in a little bit. So as you can see it's quite a light, more of a yellow color than I was kind of anticipating. So all I'm going to do is going to grab the um, olive, dark olive, and I'm going to add some of that. And I'm going to clean my paintbrush off and I just dab it on a cloth. And I'm going to paint right over that and see how that looks. So that uh, might be fine for what I'm going for. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually go for a bit of a darker brown. I'm going to pull out the uh, number that just says brown. Activating it on the uh, plate first. Um, it does eliminate the fact that you don't have any lines from your crayon so there won't be any scrubbing out of those. I'm using as little water as possible. This is a first layer. Sometimes uh, you do need to wait for things to dry and add a second layer. I am keeping the brush strokes all going in the same direction. This is so light, I know I am going to have to Come back with the second layer. I will show you on this corner if I came in and colored directly if you kind of scumble on and try very hard not to make any lines. We will do it directly on here and you can see the difference. You can apply more pigment that way. I'm going to just use a very damp brush. I'm going to take off the most of the water. And then it does kind of require a little bit of scrubbing, but very, very lightly. These crayons are very pigmented, so I'm going to come back and add a bit of green to it. And we will wait for this to dry. I'll finish off this little bit. So I'll speed the camera up while I just finish the bottom. I'm going to switch to the inside of the bottle and I want the inside of the bottle to be a little bit lighter than I'm going to have the outside of the bottle. So I've grabbed a jade green and a uh, blue turquoise or turquoise blue um, 
and I'm actually going to uh, color directly on here. I'm going to be very light-handed and I'm going to do darker colors or a bit more pigment on the ground or on the bottom and then I will uh, drag it up with the paintbrush. I'm just going to do a light layer and I'm not gouging into the paper at all. I'm just lightly scumbling on. I'm using lighter colors on the inside of the bottle because I'm going to have the same colors uh, but just a darker hue of it on the outside. So that's kind of my plan. So that is the bottom uh, of that and I'm going to come in with the green and just do a light bit of green right beside the blue so that I can mix them together. I am going to grab my smaller paintbrush and I'm just going to keep it damp, not uh, super wet. You could use a water brush, but I do find that the water brush um, depends what I'm doing. If, I'm, if I have the paper treated, then I'll use a regular brush. If I have the paper not treated, I'll use a water brush and just be very quick about it. Now if I do get it on to areas I don't want, I can come in and blot that off. I could have used some masking fluid over the bubble areas, but what I'm going to do is uh, use some gel pen over those bubbles anyways. Okay, now we're going to start up at the top. And then I'll mix in the blue. Starting at the top now because I don't want to have too much water in one area and I'll work my way down. Okay, now that everything is covered, I will let that dry. I will come back down to this area here, uh, the bottom, which is already uh, fairly dry. And I will take a look and see um, how I'm liking it. I do like this area here where it kind of has some texture to it. So there's a few different colors in this area. Um, these are obviously uh, too light and they're just the first coat. So I will continue on on the bottom and I will add some more. I'm going to switch back to my other brush. And at this point, uh, since I already have full coverage, I'm actually going to use the bottom of the crayon and I am going to pick up some colors right from the crayon itself. I'm going to actually go with the green first. Just wetting the bottom. I can put some onto my palette that way. 
So if you're having trouble rubbing, scrubbing your crayon onto the palette, you can just uh, use that. Now I can go directly onto the paper, but I did want to see the color intensity there. So I'll dab some off. Now I'm going to go and add some of this color. And I do want some texture, so I'm going to kind of um, dabble it on a little bit. It's not a smooth coat. Because sand is not a smooth area and I'm just adding some texture okay I'm going to come in with uh, the darker brown and do the same thing and underneath because it'll be like a <clears throat> shadow for me. So underneath the objects and now you can see that there's quite a bit more texture and that is where we're going to leave the bottom for now. We may come back after we're done. We can always come back with a little bit of pencil or a little bit more color but I think that that's enough for this page at this point. We're going to let this dry and I'm going to plan out the colors on the outside before I do some more colors on the inside. So I'll go grab my darker blues and turquoises that are going to accent around the outside. So I have pulled out three more colors. Uh, so I've got blue cobalt, uh, malachite green, and a light blue. And those are a little bit darker shades than what I have inside the bottle. So I do have those shades here as well and I can pull those um, out should I need them. But I am going to do um, some coloring onto my plate. So I have all three available then I can activate those. So there's three colors. I'm going to start with the uh, darkest color and I'm going to uh, go and do along the edge so that I can get that done and drying because I want it probably darkest at the edge. I'm going to try and avoid the actual bottle. and the bubbles. I'm going to then use the next color blue and overlapping those colors. For the first layer, it's okay to be fairly smooth because um, I will come back in with some another layer for the added texture. The darker colors along the bottom and it'll fade up to the top because as you get closer to the top you'll start to have some light coming in but it is still definitely all in the water and I'm tapping on the paper so that um, there is some texture like over here there's definitely some texture I'll speed this next section up 
and you can just see me complete the outside. Adding any more pigment to the page, I'm just blending out the areas where there's already pigment, making things so that they're not quite so harsh. I think I'm actually pleased with how this has turned out. Um, I don't want to do too much more to this page. I may wait for it to dry and then see which areas maybe uh, need a little bit more work but for the most part I think we're done and I think that uh, you get the idea of how I use my neo colors too in the book uh, flip to the other side and you'll see that there's no bleed through and this was from a background where I had acrylic paint before so um, lots has been on this uh, both sides of this paper and it's held up fairly well so it has been a few days uh, since I have worked on this page and I thought I would come back and instead of doing a whole other example of the background I wanted to finish this one with you so I just wanted to show you uh, I did a little bit of a, a polychromos pencils there and I added a glossy accent along the outside of this bottle. So I'm just looking at the background as a whole now and determining whether I want to do anything else before I start working on the foreground and the actual uh, picture itself. So it's looking pretty good. I could leave it here, but there is a little splotchy uh, in a few areas. And that's fine because it is water, but I also would like to just make it more presentable. So I've gone and pulled out the same colors that I had before. So the colors that I mentioned, so these are from inside the bottle and these are the outside edge. And what I'm gonna do is uh, go over and make the, um, some of the areas in the bottle a little bit more distinct, but I'm also gonna bring the green and fill in a little bit of this lighter area up here. So it's kind of like there's some, I wouldn't say sun coming from uh, like directly above, but there is light filtering in through here and that is how the bottle is getting some different colors in it. So I just wanted to bring some of those colors out up here in this corner and uh, just darken this area up a bit down here and darken this area here. So I'll bring you along for that and then I'm going to call this done. I was actually fine with the way the um, sand ended up being. It's uh, greeny brown and it is the bottom of the sea so I thought that was fine. I have taken an eraser, uh, just a small mono eraser and gone in and erased some of the areas that had been covered a little bit with paint. So in order to erase, I just used the eraser. If it really wasn't coming off and it disturbed me, I could also bring in a water brush and uh, clean it up that way. But I didn't really want to be adding a lot of water. I have completed the other side of this since our last talk. Um, so there's been more items added to this side. So there could be a few more bumps as I'm uh, going along. So let's get to work on uh, doing a bit more here and I'll just leave some music. I'm still, I've uh, selected a similar, a little bit of a smaller brush. This one is a six. I was using an eight before. So I'm just uh, gonna use a bit of a smaller brush um, and I'm gonna use the same kind of techniques. I'm going to uh, 
because I already have product on the page, I'm probably going to uh, wet uh, the bottom with a wet paintbrush using the bottom of my uh, Neo Color 2 and apply it to the areas that are not that color. The areas where it is the same color, I'll color directly on it and I will use the pointed end. So I never wet this pointed end. If I'm going to use a, the brush method, I use the bottom and that way um, it's I can use the same crayon at the same time. So I can be applying it dry if I need it and then if I need wet, I'll get it from that side. So that's what I'm doing and I hope that this video is somewhat useful to you. Now I'm coming back in to deepen uh, some of these areas on the bottom and so I'm going to color directly onto the paper and uh, this is how I applied it the first time as well. For the last step, I am taking the uh, malachite color, which is my darkest color, and I'm just adding a bit to the bottom. And I'm just going to activate it and drag it up a little bit. Just want to have it a little bit darker near the bottom. And I'm also going to take the lighter blue, and I'm going to uh, just make sure that the sides um, are a little bit darker on the edge and uh, they're lighter on the center. So just going to make sure that I don't have a bunch of white of the paper showing through, if that uh, makes sense. When it dries, it will lighten a little bit, but um, for the most part, it will be the color you're seeing. I'm going to take my lighter color now. I'm actually going to go right along the edge. Mix that in with the green that I just added. I want a titch darker inside still. Um, so I'm just going to use the um, blue cobalt on the very bottom. I think we are going to stop 
and uh, leave this as it is. And you will see the completed page in hopefully May's completed pages video. I hope you have enjoyed seeing uh, what you can do with Neocolor 2s. There's a uh, I don't think any right or wrong way to use your supplies in your own coloring book as long as you're using your supplies and you're enjoying what you're doing um, and you're trying to be careful and respect the type of paper that you're working on. I think those are all good things. I hope you've enjoyed this little session and until next time I hope you're having a colorful and creative week. Bye-bye. Thank you.